Hello everybody, Arizona Kid here. What are we doing today? We're doing a front differential and rear differential uh, fluid change on a 2020 Honda Foreman. I do know that this is the same on the Rancher. Uh, don't quote me about the Rubicon or not. So uh, let's get to it. Uh, went into the owner's manual, uh, got the oil. It looks like this is the oil we need show that real close there uh, these are two eight ounce bottles it looks like according to the manual that i have out right here that the front will take uh, 11 ounces on it i guess i can kind of shoot that in there 11 ounces us and then the the rear looks like it will take 2.9 US ounces. So if you do the math and round that up to 3, 11, you know, what is that? 14. We have 16 ounces here. So two of these uh, eight ounce bottles will be enough. So it looks like we're going to start with the front, the front for the, let's walk over here for that front hole, as you can see there, that will take a 17 and then there is a, a drain hole underneath and that will take a 10 so let's uh, get to it here and uh, I will start taking things apart so bear with me and uh, we'll be right there Hey everyone, so see the oil coming out there. I did take that little 10 bolt out and that oil looks super clean. So there's something I didn't say about this. This bike has 625 miles on it in the manual. I can go back to the manual if you guys would like, but you guys can all look that up yourself. It does say in there to do it every 600 miles. So it seems kind of early in my book especially if it looks this nice and clean at 600 miles so i guess it might just matter on how hard you're using it but anyways uh took that off uh these bolts so you guys know they are not super super tight so be careful when you're doing that you don't want to put them back on and torque them too hard i could totally see that happening and even like this uh this front one right here this guy feels so light i mean that i could probably drop it and it looks like there's a little dink right there on mine you see that it looks like maybe a manufacturer thing but that's how it came off but see i took it off that thing is so light feeling that you could step on it and probably ruin it so just be careful guys so we got the oil drained out i'm gonna let it drip there for a sec and then put this uh this plug back in now i just do it hand tight it it does have you know in your manual like i just look it does have the, the torque specifications you know uh i've never used anything like that just take it easy guys when you're tightening stuff back up but uh but yeah, so uh, let me let that drip and I'll be right back. Okay guys, I'm back. Now, I put the drain plug back in. Uh, there was a little washer that I didn't realize stuck. So make sure you check for that little washer when that drain bolt comes out. Now up here on this big opening, it says just to fill it to the very bottom of that hole. So, and it's supposed to be uh, 11 ounces, so I need to be really careful because all I got is 16 ounces and I need four and 11 uh, for the back. So four for the back, I think it was four for the back, four ounces for the back or was it three ounces for the back? Either or, it only leaves me with a few ounces of spare. So I don't wanna get too crazy, I need to go slow. So I always put the, the uh, paper towel down. You probably see that in my oil change video. Uh, I mean, I already know it's gonna 
drizzle out so I might as well just get prepared instead of making a mess all over the bike. Uh, brake cleaner is an awesome thing to use to clean off any uh, oil though that you might spill so just remember that. Uh, so I got my funnel here. I'm gonna start pouring it. I wish I could uh, kind of set my camera up to show you guys that but uh, I don't know if I can. I kind of got it on a I mean I have it on a tripod here so I can set it down but there's no way to set it to show you guys when I'm doing it. So I'll just get to pouring and show you guys the aftermath. Or I guess I can set it out here maybe. But it's just gonna show my big body getting in the way. But no, nah, we won't do that. Okay, all right. I'll okay just... guys, this is gonna kind of be a crazy video. So let me tell you this. I started pouring that into there and if you pour it too fast into the funnel, it just comes right back out the hole. So now I'm worried if I'm going to have enough or not because I spilt some. So I'm going to leave the front how it is and we're going to jump to the back and get the back done. So uh, let's go ahead and go to that because I do not want to have not have enough fluid to do this now uh we're jumping ahead here now this is still 17 back here now a lot of videos i see say take off the skid plate there is a hole for it to let me double check that yeah there is a hole to drain it i don't know if it'd be easier just to take the skid plate off but i'm going to try it without i think the main reason they went to take skid plate because that uh overfill hole right there uh oil check bolt you know people probably don't want to get it all over their plastic but i'm just going to shove paper towel there so uh let me get to opening stuff up i'm hip hop. okay guys wow look at that look at that color difference so that is the difference in color from the front to the rear now. I think the front just looks so clear because I haven't used a four-wheel drive really on this thing. So that explains it. So yes, you want to change your fluid at 600 miles for sure. Because that is some dark looking fluid there. So just thought I'd hurry up and turn on the camera for that one. That was... That was surprising. Didn't expect that at all. See that. That filthy. So wow. You gotta remember too, you only put in a few ounces in the back, which is still blows my mind that it doesn't take as much fluid as the front does. So yeah, so I like I said, I'll I'll try to maybe show the odometer when I'm done here, but the but I believe I'm like at 625, so I'm only like 25 miles over, and that looks really really dirty, guys. So yeah, don't wait for sure on that one. Change your fluid out. Let me see. Oh, my book closed up on me, of course. There it was. Let me see again how much fluid it says to put in the rear. Oh, so it is 2.9, so it's three. It's so three ounces. So hopefully I, I have enough, even though I'm waiting to do the front till I finish the back. So, uh, all right guys, so all I got to do now is just take off this fill hole here so then I can put that plug down there and then add fluid to it. Now I showed, told you guys on the front one, see how they have like a, let me put that down there. See how it has like a washer? Make sure you don't miss taking that washer. Oh, and I did take the skid plate off. Uh, it just looked easier. There's only three bolts to do that. Uh, one there, one up underneath, and then one on the side. So not too hard guys. So let me uh, get this uh, drain plug out and then we'll see about filling her up, okay? Also, I wanna make sure I show you guys before I get done doing this oil, that what mileage I was really at. 
Sorry, moth landed on me. So 625 miles. So uh, how many hours? It's almost 74 hours. So yeah, uh, it says 600 in the manual to change the oil. Like I said, I I'm really thinking of doing that rear one. You know, every 300 because that was that was pretty black. So uh, yep. So I'll get to finishing up here and see you guys in a sec. Hey guys, so. I did put the oil in there. I just barely put this on. It's still just hand tightened on. I haven't tightened it all the way on, but you can see that I did get some spillage right there. Uh, it just starts drizzling out of that hole. And that's when you know that it's full. It even says right here, you know, check bolt. You just tighten that back up. And then, like I said, I just put this on hand, hand tight. Oh, wow. Yeah, I just put that on hand tight also. So uh, I got to tighten those down, but that's it. Uh, I would definitely recommend not skipping your rear one. I'm almost wondering if, you know, how black that got so quick. I mean, I might just check it maybe around 300, 400 miles. And I mean, for the price of this, I mean, you know, four dollars and you could do your your rear thing twice for that so what is that two dollars to, to change the fluid on that rear thing yeah i think i can check it a little early because that is whoa that is some dark oil so now i'm pretty sure i have enough to do the front so i'm gonna go pour the rest of that in to the front and then i'll come back and tighten all this stuff up and uh yeah so now that I have my funnel getting oil all over the concrete. And then I'm in the backyard doing this. So <clears throat> it's not like I'm getting oil on the garage floor, which the wife probably wouldn't care. But if I get it out here on the, the pool concrete and kids are going to be slipping when they're walking around, that's not good. So, so let's get to... Sorry guys, I'm still dripping oil everywhere. So you know what, I'm just gonna turn you guys off because I'm gonna make a mistake and then I'm gonna get upset over it. So it's hard to film and do all this. So let me hit you guys. So tightened everything down. So tighten the top nut, the drain, not the drain, the check hole and the drain underneath. I put the the shield back on now. I didn't tell you guys that part. The shield is, wait, that's the top drain one. So that's the top one, 17. The, the uh, check hole and the drain hole is a 10. And the drain hole in the front's a 10. And the top's a 17 in the front also. Now, the only thing that I did different that I didn't tell you was it's a 12 to take off the skid plate. So, uh, only three bolts on the skid plate too. I would just say take it off guys. It, it's way less of a mess to do it. And it didn't take that long just to take it off. Uh, so yeah, so this is, <laughs> I mean, it's not pretty much showing you how to do it. I guess I'm pretty much just telling you guys what I use and how I did it. Cause I didn't sit there and show you all the bolts taken off. I mean, everybody knows how to twist off a drain plug, but I mean, just looking at that, this uh, fluid around, around it is from the front and that black fluid in the middle is from the back so uh i think the manual is saying 600 for both which you could i mean that's what the manual says i think i'd rather do the rear every 300 and then let the front uh 600 you know but uh but that's just my opinion once again i always make sure you guys know that i will say this if you are doing the front and rear i did end up using both of these so even though it says it only takes three ounces for the rear <coughs> excuse me guys three ounces for the rear and 11 ounces for the front which that comes out to 14 i still end up using the entire 16 ounces it's just spillage you know no matter what you're gonna overfill and it's gonna come back out you know so uh that other two ounces which you know you probably think oh that's a lot uh, an ounce isn't very much so uh, I wasted two ounces. So 
I barely made it with two of those. So if you're in any doubt worried, I mean, especially for them only being $4 each, I would maybe buy a third when you do the front and the back. So, uh, but I made it with two. So that's it guys. Uh, you know, I did get, and I don't know if you can see it. I tried to clean it. I did get a little bit down, down there. That's from the drain because I didn't take the skid plate off the front, the drain, and it did get some oil down in there when it was draining, so I had to wipe that off. But that was from the drain plug. That wasn't from this because I put a paper towel down right there. So, uh, yeah, that's it. You know, hope you guys enjoy this video. Uh, please subscribe, and uh, I'll see you guys on the next video, and I will explain... Uh, uh, a little bit of other stuff that's been going on with uh, the fixing of this quad. I just wanted to at least do this uh, one video about doing the front and rear diff service. So uh, Arizona kid out.